Hi, I'm David, and it's been quite a while since we've had a Virginian project journal. As you can see from the pieces scattered around on the floor behind me here, we've got all of the components of the layout done, and uh, today we're going to put them all together. So we'll show you some of the methods that we use to hook them up, and then we're going to run a train. So for those of you who've been waiting all this time for that to happen, you uh, don't have to wait much longer. But first, I want to talk a little bit about these guys. These are pattern makers pins, and uh, we got them from a company called CNL Fine Scale. Uh, we're using those as the alignment pins for all of the sections. So this is our old Turtle Creek section here. This is the main section of the layout, and then our uh, staging yard too. Uh, all of them are outfitted with these pins. Uh, basically, they're fairly easy to install. You put the pieces together, put a clamp on them, drill a pilot hole through, and then use a Forstner bit because you want to countersink these things so that they fit flush in with the fascia. Um, I have the pins pretty well installed. I've got one more to go here, which is in my hand, and as soon as I screw that in, uh, we'll start putting the pieces together and you can see how that fits. All right, so let's get started. So this is the part of the fascia that we're working on, and I'm actually installing the last of the female pin connectors here. Um, we've drilled all the way through on this side after using the Forstner bit to countersink the spot, uh, drilling a hole through a little bit larger than the pin so that after the pin moves through this, it has a, a place to protrude through the back side. We'll just set this into the hole, push it in so it's flush, and these are a little deeper countersink than uh, a perfect flush fit, but that's okay because we want a little wiggle room. So. They're held in place with just three small screws. Okay, with our pins on, we just wheel them into place. Now, our shop floor is a little unlevel here, so I actually have to lift this up a bit to get it to seat. And then just with my hand, I can pull it together, and uh, we're good to go. We need to take and put in some carriage bolts yet, and I've got the holes drilled for that, so let's pop under the layout and get that handled. One carriage bolt in. These are just held on with your plain old washer and wing nut arrangement. Simple hand tighten down is sufficient. Last but not least, we need to make the electrical connections. And we've used some small little connectors here that we got at Home Depot. Uh, these were just found in the electrical department. I have the connection for our DCC system. Uh, we have one plug panel that's on the Turtle Creek extension here and it just plugs into the back of one of the panels on the layout with these modular connectors. All right, here's the staging yard. Just like the Turtle Creek extension, this is fitted with some more of those CNL fine scale connectors, which are enough just to hold it in place till I can get the bolts on it. The benefit of using the pattern maker's pins is that it will keep the sections aligned perfectly every time you put them together. So here we don't need any rail joiners to put our track sections together bolts in place, and electric. We're good to go. With our staging yard attached, we can now fill it up with a train, so let's do it. We're using an NCE power cab to run our railroad with. Uh, we've installed five plug ports around the layout so we can unplug and go. The thing to remember about an NCE power cab system is that the cab itself is actually the DCC system. So for your base unit with this handheld cab, it has to actually stay plugged in to the layout at all times in order for the DCC system to run. So we'll just set that over there. What I do have, however, are these operator cabs, and these can be plugged in anywhere on the layout as long as the base system is set up. So let's take our Virginian coal train we just put in the staging yard and run it around. All right, we'll select our locomotive number, number 12. Enter, and aha, it works. Let's take a trip around the layout.
Well, that about wraps up this installment of our Virginian Video Journal. Hope you've enjoyed watching some trains run and finally getting to see the entire layout all put together. Remember, you can learn all about this project starting in the January 2012 issue of Model Railroader Magazine. And as always, thank you for watching.